Hi there, I'm Evangelist Matthew Lee and welcome to the Weekly Word of Encouragement. Family, if you've been following the ministry as well as our videos for a while, you have picked up on a special trend that we have in the month of February. Since 2017, we have produced love special messages each and every February to celebrate the month of love, to celebrate the love of God, to celebrate family and marriage and relationships and all these kinds of things. And that is what today's message is going to serve. With it coming to the end of the month of love, we thought it would be appropriate to release this message now. And I'm excited to share with you the content of this message. Before I get into the scriptures for today, however, I would like to read a quotation that inspired this entire message. And that is from a an extract of, from the sermon of Derek Prince, and I just love the way he puts it. Listen to what he says. Every Christian married couple should be a prophetic message to the world. When the world looks at Christian married couples, the world should say, I understand the way that man loves his wife is the way Christ loves the church. The way that woman relates to her husband is the way that the church relates to Christ. Would you like to be prophetic? Well, A committed Christian couple can be prophetic. You can be a message to the world. This is what the kingdom of God is like. If there's one place that the kingdom should be demonstrated first and foremost, it's in the believer's family. And if there's one place that Satan is attacking today, it's the family. Because it was designed by God to represent the kingdom. Satan wants to blur and obscure and eliminate the message of the kingdom. He's afraid of the kingdom because wherever the kingdom is established, his power has come to an end. Family, isn't that so powerful that married couples need to be a prophetic message to the world around us. Now, what is a prophetic message? It doesn't mean that every married couple is a prophet. It doesn't mean that every married couple needs to be a prophet either to be a prophetic message. It simply means that the married couple is demonstrating the the, the voice, the words, and the opinions of God. Because that's what a prophet is at the end of the day. A prophet is merely God's messenger, God's mouthpiece, one who shares God's message with his people. And if you want to be a prophetic married couple, you need to share God's message of what marriage is to the world around us. And then we can be a prophetic couple. And that is what we need to strive for as married couples. The Bible says that each and every one of us should desire to prophesy, not just your apostles and your prophets, but each and every one of us. Each and every one of us can can prophesy and should desire to prophesy. With us having the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we have that power. And therefore, if if individuals can be prophetic, therefore married couples can be prophetic as well. And that is exactly what Derek Prince is saying in this in this quote, is that we need to be a prophetic couple to, uh, to the world around us. We need to demonstrate the relationship between Christ and the church to the world around us. And I'm not just speaking about to the unsaved world around us, but to the Christian world around us as well. There are many people around us that are saved and born again, but don't understand how to relate to Christ and how Christ relates to us. And the reason for this, as Derek Prince suggested, is because married couples that are the illustration of this are not correctly representing Christ here on earth. Look at the divorce rate. Look at the infidelity rate. Look at at how couples can go weeks on end without speaking. Look at how couples can be spiteful to one another and selfish and all these kinds of things that go on in marriage that are not of Christ, family. And and consequently, people look at husbands and wives screaming and shining at each other. People look at the divorce rate and stuff and say, well, you know, if if the church is the bride of Christ, if Christians are the bride of Christ, and, and we have that relationship with Christ, then, you know, if we do something that upsets Jesus, he can divorce us. If we are unfaithful to him, he can divorce us. If if we are horrible to him, maybe he's going to ignore us, or maybe he's going to be spiteful towards us. If we are selfish, maybe he's going to want to punish us or, or all these kinds of things, family. These are the kinds of thoughts that go through people's minds of, of how Christ is because they don't understand how to relate to Christ 
because Christ's demonstration of that relationship here on earth, which is marriage, has been so corrupted and polluted by the things of this world, the ways of this world, as well as our own selfish fleshly ambition at the end of the day, family. And as Christians, we are called to a higher standard. We are called to demonstrate the love of Christ, the life of Christ, the attitude of Christ, and, and, and his goodness to the world around us. Because the Bible says it is the goodness of God that turns men to repentance. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. But how will they taste and see of the Lord's goodness? to get saved, to repent, if we don't go out and demonstrate the goodness of God to them. And not just by demonstrating the goodness of God to them, by giving them a prophetic message or praying for them or ministering to them or witnessing to them, whatever it may be, but by showing them God's goodness in marriage, how a husband relates to a wife and how a wife relates to a husband. This is a demonstration that we as Christians are called to give to the world around us so that, Christ, that people can see the relationship between Christians and Christ and better understand that and be motivated by that to have a deeper, more intimate relationship with Christ. So with that said, family, I want us to go and discuss the perfect scripture to discuss this portion of scripture. And that would have been the scripture, I'm sure, that Derek Prince would have used in that sermon as well to back up what he was saying. And that is what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to be breaking it down into different sections, but we're basically going to be reading from verse 21. So the first portion of scripture I have for you is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 24 from the New Living Translation. And it reads as follows. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. That's speaking about Christ. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. Now, all the husbands that are watching this are probably nudging their wives with their elbows saying, hey, are you listening to that portion of scripture? Husbands, I've got a message for you that's coming in a minute. And it's a couple more verses than what we've just read about the wives. So don't think you're off the hook just yet. But family, I love how it starts in verse 21. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In other words, submit to one another out of your love, out of your respect, out of your reverence, as it says there, to Christ. This is how we need to submit to one another. And it's not speaking now just about the wives. It's speaking to submitting to one another as everyone submits to one another. As we love our neighbor, as we love ourselves and all these things, family, that is what it's saying there. We need to submit to one another. We need to love one another because because we love Christ. And then it goes on to give firstly the wives the instructions. And it says for wives, this means to submit to your husband as to the Lord. I like what it says there because it says submit to your husband as to the Lord. You see family, a wife's level of submission to her husband is in, is in relation and in proportion to her level of submission to the Lord. I can almost guarantee you if a wife does not submit to her husband, then there are certain areas in her life that she is probably not submitting to the Lord as well. What does submission mean? Submission doesn't mean that the, the husband must lord it over her and it's his way or the highway and all these kinds of things, but she needs to submit to his headship. She needs to submit to his rules and his ways as head of the home, just as we need to, as the church, as believers, need to submit to Christ who is our head, who's given us his word as his instructions instructions as his rules of how he wants us to live so that when we get to heaven one day we can be presented to him without spot wrinkle or blemish Christ didn't give us the Bible and the instructions in the Bible because he wants to be selfish because he wants to be difficult with us and because he wants to lord it over us no if he gave us an instruction in the Bible of how he wants us to live it is so that when we appear in heaven we will be presented to him without spot wrinkle or blemish if he's told us that we need to do something in the word of God he said it for a very specific reason because he knows that when we do it there are certain blessings that come about with it and if he's told us not to do something in his word and we go ahead and do it it means that there are going to be negative side effects of that decision in in our lives for example if you commit adultery and fornication and, and sleep with somebody out of marriage 
and they fall pregnant, that's a consequence of your sin family. And, and that's why God is so specific about what he wants us to do and what he doesn't want us to do. Not to be difficult, but because he loves us and because he knows what's best for us. And that's a bit of advice to the husbands as well. As the head of your home, when setting rules, are you setting rules to help present your wife to the Lord without spot, wrinkle, or blemish? Or are you setting it to be the dictator and put your cap on and sit on your throne? And when your kids walk in the door, they must lift their hands and say, good morning, sir. And no, family, that's, that's not how it's meant to be. Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord. Your level of submission to your husband is directly proportional to your level of submission to the Lord. And your submission is tested, not when things are easy, not when things are going your way. Your level of submission is tested when your husband asks you to do something that is opposite to what you want, what you like, what you think, and all these kinds of things. And it's not just like that with husbands and wives. It's like that in church as well, family. There's so much rebellion going on in church at the end of the day, because the pastor says do this and everybody else does that. That is rebellion. That is not submitting to your God-given head in your church. Your pastor and the Bible says that rebellion is as witchcraft to the Lord family. We need to submit where we are told to submit. For wives, this is to your husband. For, for husbands, this is to Christ. We and, and we as people, as Christians, need to submit to our pastors, to our leaders, to our government, to our bosses, whoever the Lord has placed in, in authority over us. But I'm not going to get into that now. That's an entirely separate message on, it, on its own. But it's saying here, wives, Submit to your husbands as you submit to the Lord. And it goes on there to say, For the husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. There's your explanation right there. Christ is the head of the church, therefore the church should submit to Christ. And the husband is the head of the wife, therefore the wife should submit to the husband, as the scripture is saying. And it says, As the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. And then we come to the husband's portion of the scripture. So wives, you get ready with your elbows now. So we're going to be continuing this in Ephesians chapter 5 from verses 26 to 30 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by, clean, by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but he feeds it and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church and we are members of his body. Right, wives, now you can start nudging your husband. There's the portion of scripture for the husband. And I believe that this is, in a way, far more strict than the one of the wife. We are called to that standard. We are called to represent Christ to our wives. We are called to represent Christ to the world around us, whereas the wives are, are called to represent the church, how the church relates to Christ, and the husband is called to show how Christ relates to the church, which is why this is, is so strict. It says there, for husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. That is what husbands need to do. That is the level that we're called to. We are called to put our own lives aside. We are called to put our selfish ambition aside. We are called to put sometimes even our plans for the future aside for the sakes of our wives. Does that mean we must just now let go of everything and let our wives, wives run riot? No, absolutely not. But that does mean that if there are areas of your life that don't line up with where you're going as a family, you need to let go of those things. If you want to own a lake house and have a boat and go fishing every weekend, but that's not where the Lord is calling your family to, maybe the Lord is calling your family to serve as elders in a church, then you kind of got to let go of that dream of having that 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 um, lake house and that boat and going fishing every weekend. I mean, it sounds lovely, doesn't it? But if you're called to be elders at the church, you can't be 
at the lake house and at the church at the same time. No, family, you need to go where the direction of the family is going. You need to let go of those selfish ambitions. Christ lived in heaven before he came down to earth to be a man, and he let go of that position. He let go of, of all of those things, the power and everything that he had. He left that behind in heaven to come to earth to be a mere mortal, just like the rest of us. Christ left all of that to continue with his mission to serve his bride, to serve the church, to give himself up for her as the scripture says there. It goes on there to say, to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. I love that, washed by the cleansing of God's word. That's an important thing for us as husbands as well. We need to be spending time in the word of God with our wives and with our family so that the word of God can wash them, that the word of God can renew them. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the only quiet time that your family has. No, you, as the head of the house, you also need to encourage each member of your family to have their own private quiet time with the Lord. But as a family, you need to be doing this as well to make sure that your family is being content continuously washed by the word of God. It says that he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Now, look at that. That is the standard that we as husbands are called to operate in with our wives. We are called to present her to Christ without spot, wrinkle or blemish family is are there certain things that you and your wife are doing are there certain things that your family are doing that you are maybe condoning that would cause spots wrinkles and blemishes on your reputation with Christ or on especially on your wife's or your family's represent, um, representation with Christ family we need to make sure that we are washing our family with the word of God we need to make sure that they are without spot wrinkle or blemish this is the responsibility of men as heads of their home you have to be the spiritual head you have to lead by example you can't expect everyone else in your family to have an hour's quiet time if you are sitting having five minutes or not even praying family you need to lead lead by example. And, and as you lead by example, they will follow family. And we do this to, re to present our family to Christ without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. It goes on there to say, instead she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Now, I like that right there because what is Christ, what are Christians? We are the body of Christ. And now that this is being brought in here as well, that we need to love our wives as we love our own body, as we are selfish about ourselves and our own body, as we are selfish about our shower time, our toilet time, whatever it may be. As we take care of ourselves, we cut our hair, we shave our beards, all these kinds of things, so too do we need to do that for our wives. We can't be walking around wearing beautiful fancy suits and our wives are walking around and their nails haven't been done and they're wearing cheap makeup and their hair hasn't been cut in a year and all these kinds of things. No, family, we need to make sure that as we take care of ourselves, the same level to which we take care of ourselves is the same level to which we take care of our wives and not just that, but possibly even better as well. It goes on there to say, for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. How's that right there? If you show love to your wife, you're showing love to yourself. You are showing that, that this person that you are with is somebody that you treasure. It's somebody that you cherish. It is your princess. It is your queen. And, and you are treating her accordingly because if you treat her as a queen, she will treat you as a king. And, and it works like that. When you show love for your wife, you are showing love for yourself ultimately at the end of the day as well. Because if you don't love your wife, if you speak ill of your wife and how horrible she is, you're actually insulting yourself at the end of the day. Because think about it. You chose to be with her. Think about that. If you are criticizing this, 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 and that, you are basically saying you are poor at making a decision when it came to choosing a wife. You're insulting yourself. Just think on that for a minute, family, if, if, if that hasn't occurred to you before. It goes on there to say, no one hates his own body, but feeds it and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. Now, I'd like to add feeds there as well. It says a person feeds and cares for their body as the same as Christ feeds and cares for the church family. In other words, he feeds us provides for us and cares for us, protects us. And that is the role of a husband as well. We need to provide for our family. And I understand in the 21st century, with with both parents working, this is the modern day scenario and stuff like that. A man needs to be the provider for his family 
irrespective of whether the wife is earning more or less than him. The, the husband is the provider. The husband is the head. That is a biblical principle. And that's one of the reasons that so many marriages are struggling is because there's a constant power struggle between the husband and wife of who is the provider, who is in charge of the finances and all these kinds of things. Family, the Bible is very clear on this. The husband is the head of the house. Irrespective of who's earning more money, the husband should be the provider. The biblical principle where two become one implies that your bank accounts should be one as well. As you are one in your body, you should be one in everything, including your bank account, including your finances. But that's also another story for another day. I can preach a whole sermon just on that one right there, family. So as husbands, we are called to provide for and care for and nurture and protect our families just as Christ does the same for us, family. That is why I say, husbands, I think this is a little bit more strict for us because we are called to demonstrate Christ, not only to our wives, but to the world around us. And our wives are called to demonstrate the correct attitude of that the church should have towards Christ. These are the standards to which we are called to live by, family. These are the standards to which we are called to be a prophetic message to the world around us, as we were discussing with Derek Prince's message earlier. And with that said, I want to conclude with the last few verses for this. So let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 to 33, and I'm reading it from the Good News Translation, and it reads as follows. As the scripture says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two will become one. There is a deep secret truth revealed in the scripture, which I understand as applied to Christ and the church. But it also applies to you. Every husband must love his wife as himself, and every wife must respect her husband. Now, isn't that so true as well, family? A husband and wife leave and cleave is the principle, leaving their families, leaving their parents' house, and cleaving together for the two to become one. And that is exactly, once again, what Christ did with the church. He left his home in heaven so that he could come to earth and pay the price so that we could become one with him, family. We we are one with our spouses in flesh, but we are one with Christ in spirit, family. And he paid the price for that. He left his father up in heaven and came down to do that for us so that we could be one with him, family. And it's the same with us. We need to leave things behind. We need to forsake things of this world to become one with Christ. We need to leave and cleave, family. And that's also one of the reasons why the church is is misrepresenting this relationship to the world around us is because we're still holding on to all the things of this world instead of leaving them and cleaving to Christ, family. That is something that couples are called to do and that is something that we as Christians are called to do. Christ has already done his part. It's our time to do our parts, family. It goes on there to say, this is a deep secret truth revealed in the scripture, which I which I understand as applying to Christ in the church. So not only must husbands and wives leave their parents to become one, it's the same with Christ and us. And I particularly like the way that the Passion Translation says, verse 32. So let's read um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32 from the Passion Translation. And it reads, Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty, a great mystery of Christ and his church. There you have it right there, family. Marriage is a beautiful design by God, and it speaks about how Christ and the church work together. We are representing the relationship between the body of Christ and, the, and, and, and Christ himself to the world around us, to our Christian friends and family around us. And as couples, we are called to prophetically portray this message to the world around us. That is what Christ expects of us. That is what Christ requires of us. And that is why we need to make the decision individually, but also collectively together as married couples, that we are going to do this, that husbands are going to love their wives and that wives are going to respect their husbands. It's as simple as that, family. If we apply these principles effectively and correctly, we will demonstrate this relationship to the world around us and many will come to Christ. As Derek Prince said, the devil has deliberately been trying to attack families to stop this from happening. That's why the divorce rate is so high. That's why there's homosexual marriages and all these kinds of things going on. It's all a distortion of what God's intention for marriage is, family. We have to represent Christ and the body of Christ to the world around us. That goodness, that relationship, that love, that respect, that that 
surrendering yourselves for one another. That is what we need to be representing to the world around us. And as we do this, family, people will see that relationship and say, hey, that relationship that that man and his wife have with each other, I can see that that's the relationship that Christ wants to have with me and Christ wants me to have with him. Therefore, Lord, I surrender to you and I submit myself to you. I leave the things of this world and I cleave to you. That is what our desire needs to be at the end of the day. Our marriage Just our marriage with how we speak to one another is an effective evangelism tool. And if we screaming and shouting and fighting to one at one another, we are not demonstrating that family. And then we wonder why the lost world around us is is not getting saved. And and I'm guilty of this as well. I'm not preaching from my pulpit here or from my podium up there. I'm guilty of this just the same, family. Last year, we went on a camping trip with friend, with some friends for my birthday. And, you know, it was hot and we were packing up and I was frustrated. And I lashed out at my wife and I felt horrible about it afterwards. And I needed to correct it because even though my friends are Christians, I knew the way that I spoke to my wife was not the way that Christ would speak to the church. And I actually sent each and every one of them individually a message after that camping trip to say, listen, guys, please excuse the way that I spoke to my wife, it was unacceptable and it wasn't a correct representation of a godly marriage. And that is how we need to be, family. We need to be on our toes at all times when we're around other people. If you and your wife have something to to debate or to argue or whatever it may be, do it in the comfort of your own home where no one can see, where no one can hear. Sort that out. And as the Bible says, don't let the sun go down in your anger, but please don't do it in front of other people because we are misrepresenting Christ to the world around us. We are misrepresenting the attitude of the church towards Christ to the world around us. And this is a very dangerous thing to do. But if we effectively demonstrate this relationship to the world around us, it's a powerful evangelism tool. But the choice is yours, family. I want to encourage you and your spouse to choose wisely. Thank you, family. I hope that this message has blessed you and encouraged you and given you some food for thought. And before I end, I'd just like to close in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this day, that this is the day that you have made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your word and the advice in your word, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for each and every single person, as well as couple listening, myself and my wife included, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your example of what a godly marriage should look like, as laid out in Ephesians chapter 5. We thank you, Jesus, for being the ultimate example of a husband to us, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for the, the global church, that we will be an example to the world around us of what a wife should look like to you, Lord, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one of our marriages, Lord, that in our marriages, Lord, that we will represent you and your relationship with your bride, Lord, to the world around us, that they will see your love, Lord, that they will see the the, the submission and the surrender and and giving oneself up and and the respect and everything that goes with it. They, They will see this and that they will desire it, Lord. And as a result of this, Lord, that they will taste and see of your goodness, Lord. And as they taste and see of your goodness, that they will turn to repentance, Lord, that they will get saved, that they will start serving you and that they will become part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ as well, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are using marriages, Christian marriages, as a prophetic tool, as prophetic word to the world around us. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to demonstrate this to the world around us. And I thank you, Lord, that you give us the wisdom that we need, the strength that we need, the grace that we need to do this correctly, Lord. And for husbands to submit to their wives and wives to submit to their husbands and any singles that are listening to this as well, Lord, I pray for them, Lord, that you will lead them on the path that they need to go on, Lord, to get their godly spouse. And that as they get married, Lord, that they will remember this message and apply the principles from it. And we give you, Lord, all the praise, the glory, and the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray pray. Amen. Thanks for watching my video. I trust that the content of the message blessed you and encouraged you. And if it did, I'd like to ask you to please hit the share button to help us spread this message and to get it out there to your friends and family so that they too may be blessed by this message. And before you leave, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment, let me know what you think about the content of this message. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, I'd like to invite you to please head over to the Evangelist Matthew Lee Facebook page or YouTube channel where you'll find many videos similar to this that I've created to bless you and encourage you from the Word of God. If you watched this message today and were touched by this message and feel like you want to give your heart to the Lord and make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to invite you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says salvation. And if you watched this message and were blessed by this message and feel led to sow a seed into the ministry or to partner 
talking with us on a monthly basis, I'd like to ask you to please click on the link in the description of this video that says giving. Alternatively, at the bottom of the screen right now is the ministry's banking details as well as our Snapstand QR code. And lastly, I'd just like to ask you to please go and like, follow and subscribe to all my social media accounts if you haven't already to be kept up to date and in the loop with everything that's happening in the ministry and every time we upload a video just like this one. Thank you, family. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless.